Hi folks, thanks for joining me today. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, please think about clicking that subscribe button. What you see in the vise is an Elk Hairs Caris, with a little twist of course. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vice then is a Hanak H130 barbless hook. This one's at size 14. It's on a fine wire and it's in black nickel. Now, the thread I'm going to be using today is from Beavis. It's GSP and it's at 30 denier. Now, as always with the Vivas or any of the nano silks that I use, I like to get a tiny little bit of super glue just onto the shank. Don't worry folks, I have got some new super glue coming. Uh, I know that the brush is knackered on this one. <laughs> no need for you to point it out to me. Next, I'm going to get a few wraps at the front there and just bring my thread down the shank to get a bed of silk onto the shank of the hook. I'm going to stop just after the point and remove my waist. Now, the first thing we've got to get in here is our rib, and what I'm going to be using today is some fish-on silver wire. It's at 0 0.14, and it's a lovely, bright, shiny silver. I'll just catch that in. I want it the entire length of the body, so I can keep it nice and even. And uh, the elk hair caddis is one of the first river dry flies that I was introduced to. Uh, my friend Graham Lumsden, who kind of is my mentor on the rivers, um, got me into river fishing and uh, this was one of his favourite flies. I'm not sure if it still is, but certainly when we started a few years back, uh, it was one of his favourites. So I've got my ribbon, I've brought my thread back to the base of the fly and the little twist I'm doing with mine is I'm going to add a little bit of glimmer into the fly and what this is is from Troutline it's Perdigon ribbon so usually you put this in a bobbin and use that but I've taken a little bit off and I have that just here in my hands now I want it to be underneath. There's, I see a lot of people tying with flash on the top, and especially with dry flies, that's about as much use as a chocolate ashtray. You know, the fish are looking at the flies from underneath, so having a bit of flash on the top is kind of pointless. Unless you're just trying to make the fly look good, of course, which is never pointless. Us. But there you go. So let's just get a couple of turns to catch that underneath. And it is a little bit awkward to do, with a bit of practice, you can get it done. So I'll catch that in. Now, now that I've got that sitting where I want, I'm going to come back an extra couple of turns. So that's ready to fold up once I've got my body material on. And what I'm using for my body material is uh, from Trout Stalkers. And uh, again, it's a custom blend, but any sort of yellowish, tinted dubbing. I asked Andrew for some stuff for Mayfly and uh, he called it Mystic Maddit. M Mystic Maggot. He's got a sense of humour as Andrew. Um, I've got some out the packet here and I'm just going to dub that on. I don't want it to be too bushy but just enough as to cover up my body and I'll dress that up. And I can bring that down. I've still got um, a little bit of the dubbing in my left hand, just in case I haven't got enough. And it looks like I've actually got more than enough here. I'll just stretch that out a bit, tighten it up. And I'm going to stop there. Remove the excess. So when you're removing excess dubbing, just try and pull it down the thread away from the body of the fly and then any any sort of bits overhanging can be just trimmed away okay so far so good now the next thing we're going to do is bring our little bit of flash up underneath the body and 
bring that in line with the eye of the hook. Then when you bring your thread over, you can lock that into place. Does it make any difference? I just think it is an added trigger point for fish that are coming up to the surface. You know, are they going to take a natural or are they going to take the blinged up dry fly? <laughs> well, it just depends on the day, doesn't it? But I've got that trapped in place now. Next, I'm going to put in my hackle. And what I'm using here is a, a grizzle cape. I've already selected a feather from the grizzle cape. And I have that here. Now, before I tie in this feather, I'm just going to get a little bit of wax onto my silk. And you can see I've, I've trimmed back some of the waste, but it's not enough. So I'm just going to come in and snip that away with my scissors. Then I can get several wraps to hold that into place. Now, as always, I like to use hackle pliers. The feather's probably long enough that I could use my fingers, but I'm not going to risk it. Uh, I think, personally, I, I just get a lot more control with hackle pliers. Before I bring my hackle up, I'm going to just break the stem. Not too hard, you don't want to pull it out. And then I'm going to see which way the feather would like to lie. And I can already see that it's going to, it wants to go away from me, this one. So I'm going to get one turn on top of itself and then I'm going to just come up the body of my fly. Now I'm only leaving, on a size 14, I'm leaving maybe two millimetres between my turns. It's going to be nice and bushy, it's going to sit on the surface, no problem at all this. And uh, that's because the hackle and the wing are just the right proportions to the weight of the hook. So as I get up near the bottom here, I want my feather just to meet my wire rib. So I'm going to bring my wire rib out now and then capture that in. I can lay my hackle pliers over my tightening knob just to keep it out of the way. And then I can bring the wire rib up through my palmer in. Don't be worrying if you're catching the odd fibre in. There's enough there to still make the fly float perfectly well. So I'll just come up to meet my thread. And again, I'm going to catch that in. Now I can already see that I've still got plenty of wax on this GSP. And that's ideal because what we're going to do next is tie in our wing after I've taken this hackle away, of course. Like so. And I'm fairly pleased with how that's uh, shaping up. Ideal. Uh, it's important when you're tying um, flies down to sort of, well, this is 14. I suppose for some, this is still comparatively big. But for me, um, I'm getting into the realms and not being able to see it particularly well anymore. Uh, but it's important to have good quality cape, is what I'm saying, for these kinds of dry flies. Uh, your, your usual sort of Indian capes just don't cut it as you get into the smaller sizes. So uh, it, it get, get the best cape you can afford. I mean, I couldn't afford a good cape, so I got half a cape. <laughs> but it, it's a good one, you know, and uh, the amount of flies I'm tying makes very little difference. Okay, so what am I using for the wing? It is called an elk hair caddis. And uh, I would just like to say, I don't know if you've noticed the label on the shop here, but this was a gift all the way from Canada, from Kerry Pitt. So thanks very much for that, Kerry. It's a, it's a lovely um, bit of elk hair. I've never seen one as good a quality, actually. Now, I've already taken um, a little pinch of, and I take about a centimetre of elk hair, and I've put it in my stack and already banged it on the workbench so that um, I don't shake the vice or the camera. And I'm going to open that out, and there's the tips. Now I'm going to grab it with my thumb and forefinger off my left hand. Put my stack up to the side. And then any loose fibres or tips that I've not married, I'm just going to get them out of my way. And then I can show it up to the hook, and I want it to come 
probably in line with the, the, the bend and that looks okay. So I'm then going to transfer back to my left hand, try and use a little bit of my thumb and forefinger to ease them hackle fibers back. I'm going to get a gentle turn in and then as I'm getting more confident that it's sitting where I want, I'm going to get more and more pressure onto the hook. Just let go and check your wing, then lift your thread and bring it in front of the eye. And that's perfect. Well, it's perfect to me. I'll let you be the judge. Okay, next then, I'm going to get a little bit of UV resin onto my thread. Oops, got a wee bit of fibre stuck in there. Then I can come in with my quick finish tool. Slick everything back out the way. Sometimes you feel like when you're fly tying that you need about six pair of hands to do all these different jobs. But that's in there, nice and tight. And I can remove my thread, give it a zap before finishing the fly off. Now, when you look at elk hair caddises, and you'll see lots of pictures on the internet, uh, some people finish them differently than others. I, I, I often like to take the whole waist away and then dub in, using a dubbing loop, and add a bit of dubbing to the front, but on this occasion I'm going to try and stay as traditional as possible. I'm going to pull all my waist to the front there, and I'm going to leave approximately half a centimetre when I take it away. And there we go. Jobs are good. In. And uh, I would treat that with some uh, up high from Hunts, just the whole thing, and it would sit on the surface lovely. It's a very effective fly for um, wild brownies. Works particularly well on the River Tees, actually. Thanks very much for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking the button there in the corner. I would really appreciate your support.